Hey everyone, before we get started learning more about Duke University, we wanted to let you know that you can calculate your chances of admission at Duke and other schools with your free CollegeVine account. Start by completing your chanting profile with information such as your GPA, test scores, and extracurricular activities. From there, you can use CollegeVine's hub tool to see your chances and information about the school, such as cost, majors, and more. Visit the link in the description below to sign up and see your chances today. Just to give you a high level overview of some stats, uh, Duke has a six to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, a lot of classes are fairly small uh, and the most popular undergraduate majors uh, are computer science, economics, public policy, biology, and psychology. Um, and, and these do tend to be some of the more popular majors at undergraduate institutions. Uh, one thing that perhaps sets Duke apart is uh, Duke does have strong graduate programs uh, in some of these in some of these departments. And so uh, it is really a great uh, academic experience, I would say. Um, for example, we have uh, a graduate school called the Stanford School of Public Policy, and a lot of uh, Duke undergraduates will engage with the School of Public Policy uh, pretty often as public policy majors uh, by taking classes in, uh, in Stanford, which is the, the building where it's housed. However, some of the more popular undergraduate majors will be skewed towards large lecture formats, as you can imagine. Uh, there are hundreds of freshmen coming in every fall who want to uh, register for the big, uh, the 101 classes of each of these majors. And so for some of those classes, you will see large lecture size, uh, large class sizes in uh, a large lecture format and not necessarily that six to one student to faculty ratio, although that does come later on in your academic experience as you explore some higher level electives. So uh, just to take another step back, there are, are two undergraduate schools at Duke. One is the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences in which around 80% of undergraduates are enrolled as well as the Pratt School of Engineering, which is uh, definitely a little bit more concentrated, 20% uh, of undergraduates, and there are five majors within Pratt, uh, biomedical engineering, uh, civil engineering, electrical and computer engineering, environmental en engineering, and mechanical engineering. Uh, and these are, uh, I would say when you're applying to Duke, it, it is a distinction that you really want to think pretty clearly about because uh, transferring between those two schools is not as straightforward as just submitting a form. You do have to um, spend a semester in whichever school you apply to at the very least and apply at the end of that semester to transfer. So if you uh, apply you know, uh, to Pratt uh, thinking you wanted to do engineering or uh, or if you applied to Trinity thinking you wanted to uh, be a physics major, for example, and then at the end of the semester, you decided that wasn't for you and you wanted to switch into electrical and computer engineering instead, uh, that is a formal process that um, you, you will need to go through in order to transfer. So, the two undergraduate schools are, are pretty separate and you do apply to either Trinity or Pratt. Uh, Pratt also has its own classroom buildings in the engineering quad. So while uh, most of the undergraduate classroom buildings are housed on West Campus, uh, Pratt is uh, kind of its own bubble in E-Quad as it's called. There are uh, a handful of buildings there exclusively for uh, engineering classes. And so as a Trinity uh, as a Trinity student, for example, I am a computer science major and computer science is housed within Trinity. Um, I never stepped foot uh, inside any of the Pratt buildings until I took uh, computer architecture, which was 
the computer science course, but also a requirement for uh, electrical and computer engineering majors. And so some of my office hours were located in EQUAD. Um, and prior to that point, I had never taken a single class within EQUAD. Um, so now that we've uh, outlined the differences between Trinity and Pratt, I will uh, delve into other areas of uh, the academic experience. So Duke is, is very flexible if you are someone who doesn't know what you want to major in or, or wants you know, knows exactly what you want and it might not be a very common major, um, but Duke really does kind of have it all, 53 majors, 52 minors and 23 certificates. Um, and the vast majority of Duke students will pursue more than one degree. So that could be, you know, two majors, it could be a major, two minors, it could be a major, minor and a certificate, uh, any combination of those. and. If you take some time to explore uh, Duke's academic offerings, there are some really interesting things in there. So you could uh, pursue a certificate in innovation entrepreneurship, for example, and uh, INE is, is how it's abbreviated. That's a, a pretty popular cer certificate and a great complement to uh, any number of majors that you may want to pursue. In addition to the majors that are readily available, you can also create your own degree through program two. Uh, and the process for doing this is rather straightforward, uh, but it is something that you know requires quite a bit of work, uh, finding a faculty advisor, designing your curriculum, structured around whatever uh, it is that you want to uh, pursue a degree in and pr proposing a curriculum and a senior capstone project and preparing a, a written statement and, uh, and then applying to do program two. Uh, so for example, one of my friends at Duke had a particular interest in artificial intelligence. And so he cherry picked uh, some courses from computer science and statistics uh, and other majors that would give him a foundation in artificial intelligence to focus more specifically on that. So for example, while Duke does offer a class on artificial intelligence within the computer science major, that uh, flexible degree program allowed him to tailor his academic path. Uh, and another aspect of any college experience uh, is studying abroad. So over half of Trinity students and around 40% of Pratt students study away as it's called because there, there are uh, a number of programs within the United States. So you could do Duke in New York or Duke in Silicon Valley and, and those are, uh, or Duke in Chicago and those are quote unquote study away programs. Um, so the reason why there's a little bit of a discrepancy between Trinity and Pratt students studying away is that the uh, major requirements for Pratt students are a bit more rigid and oftentimes because of that it will be harder to find the classes you need to take in order to uh, graduate with a certain Pratt major uh, if you decide to study away. So that's something you definitely need to think ahead about if you are a Pratt student, how to study away and be able to accommodate that in your uh, in your academic plan. A lot of Duke students coordinate with friends to apply for larger, more popular programs. Uh, for instance, Duke in Madrid is a very popular program. A lot of students uh, do participate in that program. Uh, however, there are other forms of study abroad programs that are a little more off the beaten path, uh, which might be interesting for students uh, as well. Uh, a key part of the first year experience for Duke students is the first year seminar. This is required for all first years in Trinity and it's uh, basically a requirement where you enroll in small discussion-based courses that are capped at 18 students to give you that small discussion-based classroom environment. Uh, there is 
a wide breadth of topics that are offered and, and many classes have an interdisciplinary focus. So the topics might range from global environmental change to visual culture, uh, uh, but these are again just uh, these, there are a handful of first year seminar programs, but you're not limited to those. You can fulfill the seminar requirements by pursuing uh, any class with a seminar designation that meets the 18 student cap to fulfill that requirement. So my freshman spring, I took a Spanish seminar, Spanish uh, uh, 390S, which was an art history class taught in Spanish. And that simultaneously fulfilled my uh, foreign language requirement and my seminar requirements. 